In the late 1960s, students and faculty at the University of Chicago were consumed with debate over the Vietnam War, civil rights, and other social issues of the time. Amidst widespread protests and student sit-ins in administration buildings, a group of scholars headed by law professor Harry Calvin Jr. were convened to craft the University of Chicago's definitive statement on all social issues. The resulting document, entitled the Calvin Report, confirmed the University of Chicago's institutional neutrality and refusal to participate in outside political causes. I mean, the Calvin Report, I think, captures beautifully the highest aspirations of this particular university, an institution that is, as Hutchins put it, a truly a university, um, has to stand for and protect the freedom of expression and opinion by its faculty and students. And one of the ways it does that is not to make its own judgments about whose views are right and whose views are wrong. Um, you know, this institution uh, was fearless, for example, during the McCarthy era in refusing to give in to extraordinary pressures um, that would have intruded upon freedom of expression in the institution. And uh, that was part of the foundation on which the Calvin Report was based. The report itself, I think, correctly says that we are a community in the thinnest sense, and that is a community of disputatious individuals, autonomous individuals, and that should apply to students as well as to faculty. You say no social and political issues, obviously, or no moral, political, or social issues. Obviously, there's a morality to academia, okay? There are certain principles about how you run a free-thinking, disputatious institution, and those, the ethics of that, uh, you would not want to rule out by the Calvin Committee report, and I think the report itself was aware of that. Nevertheless, the Calvin report has not been without its share of controversy. After shutting down students' calls for university involvement in the debate over the Vietnam War, the Calvin report was also invoked to defend university investments in companies that did business in apartheid South Africa and in Sudan during the war in Darfur. More recently, President Zimmer invoked the Calvin Report in response to a campaign for the University of Chicago and other universities to divest their endowment from fossil fuels and companies with unfair labor practices. I, I invite faculty and students to have strong views on moral, political, and social issues. That's what the autonomy principle is meant to encourage. Um, but the idea that I'm now going to enlist what's perceived as the great powerful voice of the University of Chicago administration in support of my position um, strikes me as both uh, misguided and, when you think about it, unfair. So the Calvin Report recognizes that there are certain um, interests that directly affect the university itself and that the university needs to take positions, as any institution does, um, when those issues arise. Sure, it's possible to imagine uh, difficult cases as to, you know, is this really fundamentally about the university and the operation of the university, or is this moving beyond into broader policy questions about what the trustees or the faculty or the students think is right or wrong? And so there are always going to be marginal cases, and that's inevitable. I think people that I've spoken with have a general understanding of the aspirations of the Calvin Report. Mm -hmm. um, if they think that it means the university cannot do anything that has impacts on the real world, that's just naive. So it doesn't mean that that can't be the fact. It means that it can't do the things because it has the impact. What is the future of the Calvin Report for the University of Chicago? Stanford recently became the first major university to divest from coal mining companies. Harvard University, going against its previous policies, recently adopted a United Nations-backed code of responsible investment in green energy. Whether the Calvin Report will continue or fall in response to growing political pressure is a question for the next generation of students, faculty, and administrators.